Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. Uh, I'm joined by Andrew Bell, CEO of Regency Mines PLC today. Just want to discuss the RNS release this morning, Andrew, if you don't mind, please. Not at all. It's good, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm, I've, I've read it. The markets seem to be missing it for some reason. Yeah, I know. Um, the news gets better and better, and the reaction gets worse and worse. But <laughs> I can't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Never a true yeah. spoken, actually. Yeah. That, um, I mean, uh, I, th I thought today's announcement gave every indication one could possibly ask for, uh, particularly in some of Stephen Sanderson's remarks uh, in the UCOG announcement. Uh, about how outstanding these results are, and uh, in the bullet points, it's it stated clearly that um, the, there's natural factoring, uh, there's pressure, the, the oil is light, um, there's, there's good flow rates, um, that this is uh, <laughs> the highest stable natural dry oil flow rate from a single reservoir in any UK onshore new field, um, and that the highest aggregate stable dry oil flow from any onshore UK new field uh, discovery well. So, I mean, it's breaking records all the time, and yet nobody seems to be interested. It, it, is, it is a bit bizarre, because if you read page two of the RNS, there's 1,940 barrels delivered to Esso Foley Refinery. And this is just the start. Yep. Yes, uh, from very limited tests. Yeah. And it's indicated that, of course, uh, it, when you drill horizontally into the uh, limestones or even maybe into the ball and sandstone, um, there's potential for things to be increased. And with uh, new uh, equipment, particularly on the higher uh, horizon, the Portland, there's potential for increased flow. So, um, and also that because there was less oil flowing, I mean, less water flowing in the yeah. um, tests on the Kimmeridgean limestones, that um, we're going back to have recalculations of the oil in place. Because if, the, if there isn't, you know, 50% water, say, um, and there's more oil, then obviously that means there's more oil contained so the original oil in place can be adjusted upwards. So all these indications are there, and um, nobody is drawing the obvious conclusion, which is it's being semaphored as, as clearly as possible that this is really better than any well that's been drilled on shore. Uh, and no one is saying, well, what was which farm like when it started? And of course, which farm in Dorset has now produced about 420, 430 million barrels is projected to produce 480 million, which means it's just 20 million sh shy of being a giant field, which is 500 million barrels plus. Yeah. And it is the biggest uh, onshore um, well field in Europe. And um, when it started, it, it had lower flow rates on initial testing. And initially, I do recall, people were saying, well, there's going to be 60 million barrels there, or even less to start with, then there was going to be something like sort of, um, 90 million barrels. And here we are, um, sort of three or four decades later, and it's yeah. produced 420 million barrels. Well, if we are you know, holding ourselves up against that standard and saying, so far, everything's better, and if the original oil in place is very high, and um, if you've got these flow rates and the natural factoring, that implies good recoverability from some of these key horizons. Um, you're talking both about very substantial production and about um, <laughs> you're talking of a uh, very large amount of oil in place. And it's not impossible that this will turn out to be eventually a giant field, of course, because stuff we don't know. But when you're looking at the range of what is possible, you can be talking about a giant field here. And yet, 
here are the share prices of these companies. They're actually languishing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's bizarre because, like, like the pick on what you say, it's, yeah. it's a significant UK onshore discovery well. Just looking at the RNS, the company concludes that the wells 1,688 barrels is likely the highest aggregate stable dry oil flow from any onshore UK new well cap discovery well. Yeah. They're telling, they're yes. telling you in the RNS, it's, it's, everything's been pointed out, but the markets are missing yeah. for some reason. I mean, with previous RNSs, people might have thought, well, not enough has been explained to uh, the investors. Yes who in these companies at the moment are not institutional, they're predominantly uh, private investors, yeah. whose understanding isn't great on these things. And, you know, the analysts, even at the brokers, their understanding isn't great. After all, this is not like the U.S., where you've got however many it is, sort of 800,000 uh, wells or something, no, most of them being stripper wells, you know, under 10 barrels a day with nodding donkeys on top. But still, there's a huge amount of understanding and analysis, whereas here there's nothing because there's been nothing. So how would people ever have that expertise? It, it, it is. But now in this announcement, it's all been laid out for them, you know. And anybody can then go and they can they can use the back of a fact packet to do the calculations. <laughs> well, it well it, it is as well, and it looks like they're going to do a horizontal drill as well to further prove up the well. Yeah. So yeah. And of course, that increases the surface area, with the implications of that for production. It it, it does. Uh, I wrote obviously I wrote a little article back in 2014, and uh, mm. the misgivings I had at the time was with the uh, 2D seismic. But obviously now, if you look through the chain of events with the companies and Horse Hill, mm. they're, they're basically going to nail it now, in my opinion, because they know they know what they're looking at. The geologists have got the car samples. They've looked at the mud shake. Yeah. It, 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 and, they, and the really uh, key to me, interesting thing is, everybody has been working with, an, with what's now obviously an out-of-date uh, model yeah. uh, for the wheels because I mean, the Kimmeridge clays are the major um, oil so source rock mm. in the North Sea. And now my understanding there is that um, they've actually leaked oil to the strata underneath where it's been trapped and that I guess I mean <laughs> I, I my knowledge is uh, uh, limited because I have um, enough uh, of my enough memory of the chemistry I did as a student which was a level mm -hmm. chemistry and we, we all learn things as we go through life and having been an oil analyst myself what it appears to me has uh, happened is that as you go from solid to liquid to gas, as the kerosene breaks down into hydrocarbons, with those state changes, um, it, it needs more volume to fit it in, and so the pressure will tend to make it come out into neighbouring strata that have the capacity to, to carry oil. So in the North Sea, it's actually gone down in some cases. Um, but here in the wheels, everybody said, well, the Kimmeridge can't be a source rock, but it hasn't entered the oil window. Yeah. And I don't think most private investors know what's meant by that. Uh, do you think they do? Well, to be, to be honest, you look, at, you look at the timeline of what's going on with our sill, and you look at the different mm -hmm. places they've visited, because I believe that they missed it originally when, when they were originally drilling. Uh, we've had this conversation in the past, Andrew, but now yeah. they've actually targeted what where they're flow testing now. That's where they wanted to be, and I, I think people are not getting it now because if they do a sidetrack drill, then they're going to go yeah. further into the well, and just more more information will be released. It, it's, it's, yes, it's, I think there will be more. Obviously, when the UTEC results come back and the yeah. um, the other test results because they sent this out and that's going to be shortly as they say um, there'll be a lot more information particularly about the size of the um, oil in place and about the potential producibility of it but um, I think it would help people if they had an understanding of the uh, of the geology of the whole area um, and I think yeah there are pe people, maybe I should explain it 
sort of on the basis that a lot of the people listening may not be yes, uh, please. Ex- experts at all, is that I think uh, it was most of the papers have suggested, and the British Geological Survey in, in their study of the wheels and its oil potential in 2014 took that sort of majority view that these Kimmeridge clays, which are so important globally for generating oil, hadn't gone into the oil window. In other words, the organic matter that was deposited on the bottom of anoxic oceans and then been buried and heated up had turned into kerogen, but those uh, complex molecules hadn't been broken down further by entering into the sort of 120 degree or whatever um, you know, environment uh, that comes from being buried from sort of 7,500 to 15,000 feet, um, when that cooking or cracking uh, breaks up the molecules into uh, it, it, shorter chains with fewer carbon atoms, and that's how you get fuel oil, eventually uh, kerosene, petrol, and so on. Yeah. And eventually, if it's buried deep enough, it gets even hotter, over 200 degrees um, from memory, and then you end up with gas. Um, and they said, well, it never got deep enough, so it didn't cook up enough to produce hydrocarbons. And only a little bit, maybe in the center of the wheel basin and slightly to the south, could have entered the oil window. So there, you know, you've got your Kimmerich clays in the wheel, but you're only taking, if you reverse it, so that the lower side is in fact up. Think of it as a mountain, and only the peak um, of the mountain is your perspective area. Well, what we now know from on the flanks of the wheel here at Horse Hill, having encountered what is obviously a thermally mature rocks that have produced a lot of hydrocarbons, which are flowing under pressure, um, we can we we already know that that those burial um, figures were wrong. In other words, the you know if you take the mountain again by reversing it. it the prospective area goes right down the mountain, and most of the mountain is within it. So that means that turning back upside, you know, think of it again like the Plimsoll line um, on a ship, you've actually got a much higher Plimsoll line, a much bigger area of the wheel is now prospective for free-flowing oil, um, has now created oil, uh, and therefore the oil is there in place um, and people can go and explore all of this, and everything that they thought in 2014 is wrong. Exactly. It's all changed, completely changed. That's huge. And so those figures that David Lenegas was banding around a couple of years ago, I mean, <laughs> I you can actually say that um, there's going to be some truth in them looking at the, at the wheels as a whole. In fact, they could even turn out to be conservative, um, now, recoverability is going to depend on the extent to which they are not trapped in shales, but in rocks that are going to um, flow uh, or, or be capable of flowing without fracking. Um, because I think you know, fracking, if it comes, is going to be a long time away. But even without fracking, there's yeah. a huge, huge potential. Well, just... But I agree totally. Uh, when Dave was doing his doing his stuff and then reports come out, it, it wasn't really believed. But as we've gone down the road now and we are where we are today, just to pick up on the fracking comment, the the hill, yeah. I think they're at 900 meters at the moment. Yeah. They're not even at a thousand meters. So and the, the, the well is flowing naturally with the back pressure. So yeah. That, I don't, I don't get why everybody's going on about at the moment with this fracking because it seems to be performing quite well yeah. without even going down that road. You don't need to be talking exactly. about fracking yeah. uh, with this. Exactly. Of course, if if one day fracking were being talked about, the potential amounts of oil would be larger. Um, yeah. But uh, you don't need to be talking about fracking any longer. Um, I agree. You, you're talking about conventional production it, it is and just a just a quick quote uh the uk on shore i think it has twenty thousand barrels per day and half sales flow rate was 1700 barrels a day 
So yeah, and and I think uh, if you take which farm, which farm's peak production was about a hundred thousand barrels a day. Uh, when I last looked, it was 18,000. I think it may be 16,000 now. But about 90% of all onshore production is from just from which farm. The others are all really very small. And um, so it would be it would be really surprising now um, if uh, Horse Hill weren't to be at least number two. But I would, um, if I'm looking at the balance of probabilities. I would be saying, hmm, yeah, you know, we should really be thinking seriously, is this going to be number one? Well, in the RNS, they've already, they've already used the word commercial, and I don't think the Marx has picked up on it, because on the second page, they're talking about the Kimber Bridge. Hmm. So on. Yeah, I mean, on the, on, the, on the range of probabilities, obviously commercial has become much uh, more uh, into, the, into that range. But um, when the results of these studies come back, I'm sure that the operators will be saying a lot more about that and will have much more accurate information. So I think uh, in the first two paragraphs of today's RNS, the word will be reported shortly um, yeah. is repeated twice in, in respect of work that is ongoing and that follows up um, this, these flow tests. So. The, the, the announcements will continue to flow, and I think as they do, we'll get some of the uh, dots filled in and the gaps coloured. But uh, I, I, I'm really surprised, as I say, that the extent to which people have not responded to the last couple of announcements at all, and I've sort of got tired of the story because, to me, the story is only just beginning. Well, it is because, like you say, you've got the three tests, and then you're going to examine the possibility of the flow rates from the horizontal well. And this yeah. is just this is just off one pad with one drill. So imagine if you do multi drills off the same pad in the future. Yeah, yeah. If you had several wells off the same uh, platform, which I think is quite common these days. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. Mm. You do the yeah. direction and drill it. So, yeah, I think it's. Uh, oh. It's a lot more legitimate to speculate about all these things now than it was two years ago uh, because we simply have now the information. And the information from these flow tests has astonished everybody, even the most optimistic, because the flow, the pressure, um, the, the fact that the water cut was so small, um, these are all uh, astonishing, even from the Portland sandstone. Yeah. The flow rates that were achieved were um, much more than at Brockham nearby. And I think Brockham began, started at 150 barrels a day production for quite a long time. You did, but, yes, um, Eddie, yeah. If you drew a line through that to this, um, you'd be, I guess you'd be talking from that Portland horizon alone about potentially something that would be second only to which farm. Let it's going to be exciting as well for Angus because the geology and everything looks to be all the same. So it, it, it's got to be good, well, yeah. actually. Well, I mean, geology, of course, is, is never the same quite. And uh, yeah. uh, But it's unlikely that this is the only well that's going to have this potential and these characteristics. Um, and um, I, I think... To, this is the first well that has tested the Kimmeridgian properly and got uh, flow rates from it and that has, will have brought about a reinterpretation of the potential of the whole basin. So that is an enormous credit to the operators and to um, the strategy with the original well and the fact that every 10 meters a sample was taken and was tested and um, so there were various targets um, from the original well drilled a couple of years ago, but even the areas that weren't targets have been looked at, and one of them has been found to be, uh, the, the Kimmeridgian has been found to be a uh, complete revelation and a gold mine. Yeah, by the way, I totally agree. Just, uh, just a quick one, the last one, Andrew, please. 
It says it obtained regulatory permission to conduct extended production tests from all three zones. Do you guys have, have a clue how long this will take? Do you have any idea? Uh, no, obviously we yeah. talked to people who've been through that process before mm -hmm. and the operators um, have a, a good idea. Uh, UK oil and gas know um, what the sort of upper and lower limits of that time frame is yeah. and are obviously trying to change them. But I think that's definitely something that we should leave them to speak about. Yeah, of course, um, yeah. Yeah. And just, just, the, just the last one, like I say, with the uh, new tech in Exodus, evaluating the fields, I think I think they'll come back with something, just my personal opinion, I think they'll come back with something very, very big in the report. My opinion. I um, can't comment on that. I think that the the UK oil and gas RNS this morning, um, it, it sort of barely suppresses the sense of excitement that everybody involved with this feels and it does refer to the potential upside um, that were, comes from these studies but exactly. until the study comes back you don't know really what's going to happen um, sure. but um, for me um, I personally have bought Alba shares because um, Regency most of the time and at the moment um, we're in a closed period uh, but I think that the prospects are very good and I regard that as one for my pension fund. <laughs> the, the normal investor, they don't know the time frame and they don't realise no. it is a process and if you just go back over the RNSs, take UCOG for example, which we did yesterday when we put an article out last night and the mm. timeline is there for everybody to see. So. It's definitely going to be interesting moving forward in the next year or two years, that's for sure. Yeah, I think it is. I think um, uh, also the, the government will be oh. very pleased about this because um, just as the North Sea is more or less running out of steam, at least at these prices, uh, even if you accept that you're not going to get any tax revenues from it, yeah. um, it's difficult to get production continuing uh, there. Um, suddenly the baton is passed to the south of England. Exactly, yeah, I agree totally, especially with the government, with uh, the bad press they've been getting when they've been using the word fracking, and now they've got yeah. a bell on the doorstep that doesn't need that. They must be really if, if these results come through um, favourably over the next few weeks and people start talking about it, because after all, the importance of these uh, studies is that they're independent. Yeah. having some independent validation of all this would be tremendously important, uh, particularly from the point of view of the press and the newspapers who may feel they've been bitten by this story in the past. Yeah. Uh, I, I should be interested to see the expression on the faces of some of the leaders of the SNP. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, it's, it's been, by the way, it's been great talking and thanks very much for talking to our LSE Share Talk, Andrew. I'm happy to be talking to you. Thanks. Bye. It's genuine. Thank you. Bye-bye.